Game so. started. Oh, Red Rover. Okay, let's try uh, E4. Let's see, I have four wins and two losses against Red Rover here. E4, D6. People play funny stuff. Okay, this is the modern Philidor. Um, he can play... Uh, He can play e5 after this. Oh, he's going to Fianchetto. Okay, so maybe it's just the modern defense. Can I play f4? He doesn't have a check on this diagonal. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. And he's not pinning the knight, so this, this pawn is well defended. So I guess this is more like uh, the Pierce or the modern defense than the Philidor. The Philidor would have been with the e5. That's not happening here. <clears throat> I can play e5 myself. Um, I think I would rather just castle here. Ah, yeah, and he can harass the knight. <laughs> so once again, I put my bishop on the wrong square. <laughs> Okay, I should harass his knight before he harasses mine. The The problem was I was going to lose the pawn on uh, e4 there. If he kicks my knight and I have to move it, he can just take the pawn on e4. Now he can um, play b4 and we can trade knights. b4, pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight, pawn takes bishop. Yeah, that's good for me, so he can't do that. So my, my threat is bigger than his. So he needs to take or move the knight. I guess I'll take back with the bishop if he exchanges queens here. Because um, I like the forward position of the knight, and I'm still trying to keep his knight from hopping into uh, e4. <clears throat> his knight Check. could go to um, his knight could go to d5. Then his, his bishop is kind of locked in. I think eventually he has to just move that knight. The knight could go to g4. I could castle. He can't go to these squares because they're covered by the rook and the bishop. Or he could go there, and that's that's probably a fine square for his knight. Now, if I trade, <clears throat> he gets um, an advanced d pawn. I could trade and play c3 to try and hold these pawns back. There was a way to attack the B pawn, but it looks like he can defend them both. Like knight. <clears throat> so knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and then knight to uh, D4 would hit the B pawn, but he can defend with A6. And the uh, D pawn is loose, but not hanging. I'm not attacking it. If I don't trade, though, oh, this knight, oh, I know. Uh, instead of trading, why don't I go to E4? I want to leave his pawn structure the way it is. My f pawn is defended by the bishop. So I guess I'm okay. I will be able to castle, and I think I have an edge because I've managed to kind of uh, corral his bishop. But uh, I had to make a backwards move there with my bishop. <laughs> so my development is not the greatest either. We both have uh, two minor pieces on the back ranks. He's got his queen side undeveloped, and I have these two funny looking bishops. But now if he ever plays um, e6 here, I am knight to d6 is a nice move. Um, he'll probably play something like f6 at some point. And um, I guess I will have to take when that happens. Maybe No, maybe I don't have to take. Maybe I could just let it sit there. Okay, so he goes after my knight first. Yeah, it's a logical move. It's a developing move. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's this loose pawn here. Can I ignore it in some way? A knight. Oh, this pawn is defended. Oh, <laughs> my backwards bishop did some good. It's defending the C pawn. Server announcement. Okay, so I'm free to move the knight wherever I like. 
Is it good over here? Yeah, maybe um, C5 rerouting to um, D3 is an idea for the knight. I still want to castle, maybe play the move uh, G4 to kick this bishop. Or knight to... Uh, Yeah, knight to d4 maybe is an even better way to kick the bishop. Okay, I am not going to waste more time. I'm going to trade that piece and then castle. Okay, success. <laughs> and he castled too. So I still have managed to uh, keep his bishop hemmed in. I now need to try and activate my pieces. So we'll start with this move. This takes uh, squares away from his bishop, opens up another diagonal for my light squared bishop. And... Where do I want these pieces to go? Knight to g5 to e4 is an idea. A bishop, <clears throat> start with bishop c2 and bishop to d2 to clear the back row so my rooks can communicate. And um, I can support something on the uh, Okay, so it's a little dangerous putting a piece on this D file where he's going to have a rook, but I'm going to get a rook to the D file. So, and the knight is defended. The bishop is defended by the knight, and he's got two pieces in the way of the rook, so he can't clear both of them with tempo. But there are some ideas here. If he can exchange this guy off, then the F pawn falls. So, um,. Hmm, after rook to d1, maybe bishop to b3 to uh, hit his knight again. There's also pawn c4 immediately, pawn takes, and he's got these funny doubled pawns. Maybe with some preparation that might be good. And knight to um, d4, hitting his uh, c-pawn, which is defended by the bishop now, but yeah, keep the bishop tied up. Knight d4. Hmm. Let's see if we're all connected here to still. Okay, he is, he is, he's moving. Okay. Um, okay, that stops the bishop b3. Now is um, c4 an idea? I don't still have, I still do not have a great way of rounding up that pawn. <clears throat> so I'm going to play my rook to the center. Maybe if I just trade off his active pieces, it'll leave him with a bad bishop, and uh, my remaining pieces will be good. So just bishop. Uh, e4 and taking the knight. And then this bishop would be free to go to uh, e3. That would be a good square for this bishop. I'm looking at c5 and some of these pawns over here. Hmm, okay, what is uh, what is black playing for here? His bishop has no great moves. His knight is ideally posted already. Okay, just going for the pin. That makes sense. So like I said, I think I'm just going to uh, trade off this good knight. So if bishop takes and rook takes, and then bishop to um, e3, rook takes, rook takes, gotten rid of a lot of the material. I've given my opponent the bishop pair, but one of his bishops is this uh, bishop on 
One of his bishops is this bishop on g7, which I'm hoping will continue to be a bad bishop. After rook takes, rook takes, he can take my knight. I didn't choose to do that. Well, this is not so bad for, uh, it's not so bad for uh, black. Mm, not so bad for me either, I guess. Um, I'm going to bring my king over here to the center. He can't invade. The bishop is guarding this square and this square. The rook's guarding this square. And um, if he goes to d3, my king to e2 will keep the uh, rook out of that square too. But uh, the king to e2 is a, maybe a problem. Ah, uh, yeah, so now he's going for this idea here. So let's, let's stop and think. If I kick the bishop, he takes the knight, I take back. And then he takes the pawn. He's winning a pawn. Yeah, so he's succeeding in activating his... Uh, he is succeeding in activating his bad bishop. Shucks. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Sometimes bishops don't stay bad forever. So that's the threat. The threat is to take the knight and then take the pawn. And I can't defend it with the bishop because he can play um, c5 and kick my bishop. Is there some other way I can go after his, his rook? His, no, his rook is pretty good on that square. I could go after his bishop with the king. That doesn't help. He still takes, I take back, and then he takes the pawn. So I guess I have to take. I don't want to go down material. I don't have anything great to speak of in this position if I'm down material. So he took, now I'm going to kick this bishop. He took with the pawn, which momentarily leaves his bishop locked up. And now his bishop has an avenue into the game. He can either push to, uh, he can either push to f5 or he can route his bishop to f8 and then come out on this diagonal. And my knight, this square on um, d4 would be a good square for my knight, except he always has c5 to kick it away. But um, well, we'll see. From c, from d4, it can also go to uh, e5 or e, rather e6 or c6. Yeah, so the bishop goes back there, kind of a defensive role, but uh, not bad really. Okay, let's make sure the rook is not invading here by bringing my king over. And then let's uh, put the pawns forward. This light squared bishop does a good job of controlling my knight. Like if the knight hops into e4, this uh, d4 rather, this bishop is controlling all those squares. But maybe I can coordinate on the dark squares here. Let's see. Knight to... Um, knight to g4, he kicks it. Is that anything? Just has to come back. Um, well, I want to see if he will play the move c5. I think I'll just have to go back if he plays it, but um, maybe it'll create a little bit of a weakness somewhere. The knight also keeps his bishop in check. Aha! He's just going to go here, but uh, because he can take check. there with check. Yeah, that's good. That's a good move, because uh, otherwise I was going to grab this pawn, but now I have to move the king. And I can't go uh, this to this file because it, then the knight will be pinned. So I have to go here, I guess. I could have also gone to um, e1. <clears throat> okay, now he's got to defend the c-pawn or move it. He chooses to defend it. Okay. Well, here. 
I'll try to invade with the king and the rook over here. Yeah, he's got a pin on that pawn. It is true, but it's uh, defended as well. Hmm. Okay, knight to this square would be good, or this square, but uh, the knight is far away from those squares. Just uh, defending things with the rook. Let's see. He can't, uh, yeah, he can chase the knight away. And he's still defending the b-pawn. Yeah, he's doing a good job of holding on to everything. So knight here, I guess. Yeah, I'm in a little bit of a cluster. He could play something like um, h5 there, threatening bishop to... Uh, oh, he threatens along this file. Yeah, he's done my bishop. My, my rook doesn't have a lot of squares, so... Um, I guess it goes here. Check. Oh, Clever, clever, taking advantage of the pin. But he had a better move. He could have played rook to uh, <clears throat> rook d3, pinning my bishop, and and I didn't see how to defend it actually. Check. Yeah, I don't have to go back into the pin if he um, he can attack me with the bishop. Hmm. Yeah, the only thing that's going on here is I'm uh, uh, ahead on time. <laughs> hmm. Not much to hang my head on. I think I should uh, get rid of this pawn, which is an annoyance. Guess he can check from behind. Okay, he's letting me liquidate one pawn. So now he has this advanced passed pawn, but it's isolated at least, so it's not uh, not as strong as it would be. Um, so I still need to figure out how to get pressure on this guy here. Maybe route the knight around this way. Knight to um, ah, knight to um, uh, d6 check is the idea here. Yes, here. I don't want to walk into that fork with the pawn. Yeah, Check. so he walked into that one. So I can pick up a pawn over here. Or I can take this pawn. No, I can't take it because he's got it defended by the rook. So knight takes, rook takes, bishop takes, and it's a rook against two bishops. is good for black. So I will... Let's see. But let's make sure I don't get mated. If he pushes a pawn forward, check. Let's see, I can't go here, can't go here, and uh, can't go here. So I have to go here. And then he has a check. And <laughs> that is mate. <laughs> That is a problem, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I can't put my rook on either of these squares. Oh, that's annoying. Let's see. Is there anything else I can do? Knight takes pawn. Because the threat is just pawn to uh, g4 check, right? And then followed by rook here, mate. Yeah, so I need to take it.
check. Um, yeah, so is he mating me anyway? Let's see. I can't go anywhere in this row. I can't go here. And I can't block it, so I have to go here. Check. And now, let's see. I can't go anywhere on this row. Here, that's taken. That's taken. Ah, I can block with the knight. And then he checkmates Check me. Mate. Well, that was a nice, <laughs> a nice mate. <laughs> and he did it uh, just under the clock. So uh, I'll upload this one and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.